So I figured I'd give an update. It's mid-September now. Uh, all the hot, uh, heat-loving vegetables that I have are gonna be get taken out pretty soon. I'm gonna replace those with uh, more cold weather or fall stuff. So I figured I'd take a video and kind of show what things look like before I start chopping. Um, right behind me, this row over here, there was some tomato plants there. I already cut those down before I decided to take a video and I'm trying to get some, uh, some green beans going for the fall. But haven't started yet on the rest of it. And as you'll see, as I walk through, a lot of it's getting pretty overgrown and out of hand. I'm gonna have to start a little compost pile. Some of these vines are going into other vines and covering over the walkways and stuff like that. So yeah, I'll just take a little tour around. So I'm just going to start on the outer row here and uh, I got my camera on a tripod. I'm not using the cell phone anymore. I got a new fancy camera and a new fancy Bluetooth mic so I can swivel and show things. Uh, so I got some Swiss chard I started there. I got some, uh, I think it's pronounced Mahakia. It's an Egyptian spinach, the tree looking thing there. And uh, you can put that in salads. Uh, next to it, I've got what is that? Poblano peppers. Uh, it's not really producing much anymore, so I'm probably gonna take that out. I've already taken everything out of these other containers and I'm starting some, uh, some kale and uh, various kinds of beans. I think I put some fava beans in there. And then down on the end, more Swiss chard. And you can't see it. I'll probably take another shot of that from a different perspective. I got some tomatillos growing kind of over the fence out of the container. And then right in front of me here, Let's see if I can, that's as far as it'll zoom. Maybe I got to back up some. Oh. So here I got my sweet potato surrounding my peach tree. I need to cut it because it's starting to choke that peach tree and the peach tree won't get any more light. But this sweet potato is just out of control. That was two shoots that I planted probably three months ago. I got some uh, some beans on the end there, and right here I got the pomegranate still growing. Uh, it's probably doubled in size over the summer. Next to that we got some lima beans, and then over here you need a good angle on that. I think that's more tomatillo. No, that's eggplant. That's the best eggplant in the yard. That one's perfectly healthy, and it's got like four different eggplants on it. You can see one's hanging there. I just put a plum tree right next to it. That's that plum tree. That has just gone in the ground from the nursery. And let's see. Here I've got, uh, this is supposed to be beefsteak tomato, but um, they are not getting full size. And that's kind of the reason I pulled these other tomato plants. These are just turning out to be little baby cherry tomatoes. And then, here where I pulled those other tomatoes, I just got oregano left over. And like I said, I put some beans in the ground there. So over here in the corner, I've got kind of a mess of morning glories that I started uh, from some seeds that someone gave me. There's some cow peas in there. And then I had tried to start some sunflowers there and it's just a big tangled mess. I think the morning glories are winning. They seem to be uh, overtaking everything, but you can see some cow peas are dangling where the cow peas uh, were planted in between. And then if we can get a shot of this, next to that is the mammoth sunflowers. That got really tall, I'd say 11 feet. And once the flower came out and started uh, getting pollen on it, it got too heavy. And now they're all leaned over like that and there's no seeds on them and all the pollen's gone. So I don't think they're gonna, um, they're not gonna reproduce. Uh, I'm not going to get any seed out of that, and I'm not very happy with the man of sunflowers. So I'm going to try a different variety next year. So here in the middle, we can see the hyacinth bean that's crawled up the uh, six-foot trellis that I gave it. And those vines are branching out on both sides. We're looking at it from the side here. So the vines are coming behind it, and they're on that new row I made, and they're wrapping around the sunflowers. There's supposed to be a walkway there. i got to get behind there and start cutting that and clean it all up. In front of the hyacinth bean here, let me zoom in just a little bit. We got some basil going to seed. We got some zinnias growing. There was some kale in there. I think you can barely see the kale on the bottom. If I zoom in, 
and it wants to focus on the moringa tree. I put a moringa tree right beyond the moringa tree. There's kale, and caterpillars ate it. The camera doesn't want to focus, but yeah, to the bottom right of the moringa tree, which is in the front, there's some skeletonized kale. And then I've also got tomatillo growing in there. Interesting enough, that tomatillo plant is split in half down the middle of the stem when a windstorm came, but it's still making fruit and it's hanging in there. It doesn't look like it bothered it whatsoever. It's still going, so it's kind of amazing. And then I've got my trellises of Malabar spinach. This is the backside of the Malabar spinach, and I've interplanted that with eggplant. It's kind of interesting how this Malabar spinach is going up that five-foot trellis there, and it's wrapping around the eggplant. And it seems to be kind of holding the eggplant up. It's awful nice of it. So over here I've got uh, this table that I made and it's kind of obstructed by a bunch of wood that I have leaning against it. In front of that you can see canna lilies I've got in pots. My plan is to kind of uh, block the neighbor's grass from coming in with canna lilies. I'm going to, and I already started on the back fence, dig a little bit of a trench, get those canna lilies in the ground, and then I've got some uh, aluminum, what do you call it? It's roofing material, it's like a sheet of metal that I'm putting in the ground to kind of be a boundary on the other side of the canna lily. So the, can, the idea is the canna lily's roots will fill out, hit that metal sheet, and then bounce back the other way to block the grass. So I'll make a perimeter of canna lilies, that metal sheet, and maybe I'll put some paving stones to kind of make it look nice and flat. On the table, you can kind of see that I have, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit, and a couple tomatoes there that I can put in the ground if I want to. I don't know if they're going to do anything. I have sweet potatoes uh, that I never did get to around to putting in the ground because I'm out of room. And then I've got a, what is that, Mexican petunia that I propagated from the front yard from a cutting in a pot that I'm probably going to put along the fence somewhere. Over here, this is my little herb garden next to the house. I've got holy basil there right in front of us. And I've got zinnia. I've got a whole bunch of purslane in the front and all the leaves fell off. I think purslane acts more like a cactus, like a succulent. It did not like the rain. When it rained, all the leaves turned black and they fell off. So that's fine. I'll just take them out and I'll replace them with something else. In the back there, I've got sage. I've got rosemary. This is Genevieve's basil going to seed. More zinnias. And I want to say Thai basil over there in the corner. And then I've got this mess going on. There was, I think, a volunteer. I don't know if it's pumpkin or if it is a um, cantaloupe. But it's some kind of melon that was volunteered from a seed in my compost. And then it's also tangling around some sweet potato vines. So I've got sweet potatoes, some kind of squash melon thing going on. And then I've also got blackberry on my trellis. And they are all getting tangled up on each other. So I got to decide what I want to keep and what I want to cut and try to clean that up. And you can see like in the walkways here, just got a mess of vines because I also have right in front of us a cantaloupe in a container. Cantaloupe in a container. So all those vines are going everywhere and I gotta clean that up. So this is the middle of the backyard facing outward from the house. And I've got over there in those Lowe's buckets, I've got a couple eggplants that I figured I would try to plant in a bucket and see if that worked. They have made no fruit. I think putting something in a bucket like that just isn't gonna work for a vegetable that's a heavy feeder, like a tomato or an eggplant. Might work for some lettuce. Um, so I might try that over the fall. But um, didn't really get good results out of that. I got, you know, they grew vegetation and I can compost them, but I didn't get anything to eat myself out of that. Over here I've got, I think I put another, yeah, another moringa tree. And then porticula, Portu I don't know how to pronounce that, flowers underneath. And then I've got some cayenne peppers. And then we'll get a better angle on the fig tree because I want to kind of show that off. But that is one year of growth and it is probably four foot tall and it's got about six branches on it. So it's pretty impressive. And then this is the front view of the hyacinth. So I've got, I'd say 10 foot uh, long trellis there and probably six foot tall. And I think those vines are probably about 15 feet long if I pull them out. And they've just wrapped around and wrapped around. Some of them have gone around that trellis three times. 
And then in the container over there, what is that? Lima bean. And then this is the front view of the Malabar spinach. And that's kind of interplanted with some cayenne peppers and various basils that I have in front. And that's done really well. This companion planting uh, concept, uh, I tried it out over the summer. You know, it's supposed to make plants stronger and more pest resistant. So it kind of obscures the smells from the pest that likes them, uh, the microbes work in synergy and I can I can really say in this backyard plants that are more interplanted with other things and flowers have done much better than things that are off by themselves. So hopefully you can see me standing behind this fig. I'm still practicing with my new camera. I kind of aim at something and then get in that spot and uh, estimate. But I just wanted to kind of give a comparison my body compared to you know the the uh, how tall this fig is. And these leaves are super green. I got all kinds of figs growing on here. If these make it to fruition and go all the way, I'm going to have, I don't know, 30 different figs on this little tree here. It's done really well. So this is the row to the left of the middle of the backyard. It's kind of hard to get a good angle on here because I've got so many vines behind me. I can't really stand and put the camera anywhere. And if I zoom the camera all the way out, this is about far out as I get. I wish they had more lenses for the, the new Canon uh, crop sensor, but this is what I got. So here's some cucumber. This is actually the children of the cucumber that was there. I had eaten some cucumber, put it in a salad, and I just tossed the seeds into the ground here underneath the one that was existing. One that was existing died and got ate by some squash bugs. So. Here's all its children, and it's already producing. It didn't take very long at all. And then here you can see the siblings of the original cucumber that was there. I think I've got two more down that row, and you can see an Armenian cucumber on the ground there just laying ready for me to pick right there. You can see the vines are making their way across the walkway there. It's just out of control. I've gotten so many cucumbers. I think probably three dozen now off of three plants over the summer it is not bad at all. And they're big. Like you cut up one of those, that is an entire breakfast with some eggs and tomato. Um, this other one, what is that? I think that's tomato that is not producing fruit. I'm going to cut it down. Then I've got some globe amaranth in between and then some more peppers. Um, all these tomato plants, like this one right here to my left, they're not making tomatoes, so they are about to get yanked out of the ground. So over here, things are kind of so overgrown that I don't have a good place to put the tripod without stepping on stuff. So I'm going to take the camera off the tripod and kind of hold it. So forgive me if it's a little bit more bouncy. I will try not to rotate very quickly. And here is the last row in the garden. And this is all of my okra. Let me look down and find a place to step. So this okra row, these okra are out of control. You can see there's still, I just picked this yesterday and there's more ready to go. You can't find them all. It makes so many so fast that you will have, I'd say I'd probably had a three gallon bucket filled with these, about half a five gallon bucket maybe filled with these every single day. I can just eat okra. I don't know how many plants I got there, maybe I want to say seven and then those were interplanted with cowpeas and man that did good the cowpeas took off the okra took off this soil when I got it tested was 80% calcium carbonate one part per billion nitrogen uh, low on potassium and yet I have all this so I'm pretty amazed with the okra and I'm definitely planting that more again next year and then on the other side of the okra Again, let me forgive the camera bounce. i got to find a place to step. All right, now I can look through the lens again. So here we have Chinese long bean. I don't have a walkway anymore. I was just letting these grow on the ground. And after the fact, I was like, you know, these are really getting to where they need to be on a trellis. So I kind of started a first trellis here and by hand interwove one of the vines. And now they're crawling up that trellis and over that trellis but it's a mess. 
I can't walk back there. Um, even if I wanted to get some beans, I think I'm going to keep letting them grow because they're doing really good and they're putting nitrogen in the soil. And in this area of the yard is the worst soil and it had no nitrogen when I tested it. So let them do their thing until they die and it freezes over. And then over here, that is what's left of yellow pear tomatoes. It's making one or two here and there, not really producing much anymore, but I want to get some more seeds out of it before I cut it. Uh, can't see on the other, well, we'll walk over there. Let me, I've got a little path here. So on this side, you can see that I put some of its children in a container and they're doing good. I don't know if they're actually gonna make tomatoes by the time the freeze comes, but we'll see. And I'll spin around slow. We're back to the green beans, the okra. This is the other side of the hyacinth. This is where I have my compost pile and I threw a tarp over it. And I've just been cutting stuff and throwing it down there in front of that. I don't know what it's called. This yellow flower that I bought from the nursery that starts with a T. And then over there, it's kind of dark and shadowy. You can see where I've done what I explained with the canna lilies. I dug a trench, put that uh, aluminum sheet, and I'm planning to put some paper stones, trying to make that look nice. Those canna lilies, I put them in the ground. They're already doubled in size. I put these in the ground like three weeks ago, maybe two weeks ago. So that's going to make a nice, uh, nice boundary along the fence. So this is a little space between the house and the neighbor. You got maybe four or five feet there. I put a row of amaranth. It's definitely done. I'm just going to collect the seeds. I'm going to pull that out. I don't know what I'm going to put here. This area gets very little sun. It's only lit now because it's uh, probably two in the afternoon, the brightest part of the day, and the sun gets in there, and then it's, it's gone in an hour or two. So I'm not sure what I'm going to put back there. Something that needs low light. Maybe just throw some more morning glory back there and some onions. I think that's about it. And here's the other side of the house. You can see I put another tomato in a bucket. It's not really making tomatoes for me, but it has made a whole lot of biomass. I've probably cut three times the amount that's shown here in the bucket over the course of the summer and because it just got too big and it was taking way too much water for the roots that would fit in that bucket. And then along the side of the house here, I've got some thyme. Don't know if I could zoom on that without bouncing too much. Right over there, got some thyme, not in the containers, but to the right of it, the containers are full of weeds. And then we've got green onion along the side of the house. And then here I'm back on this vine on the ground. I was walking back to get my tripod and I spotted this. I really want to say that's a cantaloupe. So I don't think it's pumpkin. I think it's cantaloupe. And there's more than one of them. That's one. And there's another one. So I hope those get big enough to eat before it gets cold. So here's along the side of the house on the walkway that goes to the backyard. I've got some zinnias, I've got some rosemary, and I believe I have some lavender along with that and maybe some oregano right there in the middle. And then this swings over to the garden in the front of the house. This is all ornamental because this is what people are going to see. I want this to look pretty so they don't complain about the rest of the house. But I've got some lantana in there. I've got some salvia, that's the purple. Um, got some rosemary there. Uh, what else do I have? Let's zoom in a little bit. I think I put some purslane in there just for fun. And then alongside here, this little island is a bunch of sweet potato and it's ornamental enough that it looks pretty around my crepe myrtle. So here's the view from the very front of the house. I've got these stones laid out. Oops, I tilted the camera a little bit for kind of landscaping. And then up here, let me tighten this so it doesn't tilt. I'm still getting used to working with a camera. So here you can see my crepe myrtle, my sweet potato vines, all that lantana. Behind it, I've got a hibiscus poking through the sweet potato. And you can see that sweet potato is starting to climb the crepe myrtle, so I'm gonna have to cut it. And then I've got globe amaranth, zinnias, and another crepe myrtle. And then over here, more globe amaranth. I put our moringa tree over there because I didn't have space anywhere else, and that's where I used to have more amaranth growing. Um, not the globe amaranth, but the uh, blood, lives, blood lives bleeding 
and that was like four foot tall and it looked really nice, but it got burnt up in the summer. And then this is the uh, the final little corner of property here, the left side of the house. I've got some lemon balm, got some more zinnias. I've got the shrubs that the house came with. I guess those are probably Eopon hollies. Um, Dianthus, I think. And that's about it. So I've got the camera off the tripod again, so forgive the bounce, but I just wanted to show, I was successful in starting some apples. Uh, started some apple seed from some gay apples, and I'm trying to also start another variety because I hear you need two varieties for them to pollinate each other. But um, I'm not, I'm not going to stay at this property for 20 years. I'm trying to sell this house, but I want to get those big enough and put them in a bucket that I could take them with me wherever I go. And then I've got some more amaranth up there that I had started. I don't know if I'm going to get that in the ground and be able to do anything with it fast enough for it to turn into anything. Over here, I'd ordered some sneezeweed is what it's called. It's a, it's a pretty yellow flower. I don't think these are going to make it. Those have been in those pots for a couple of weeks and that's as big as they've gotten. So something's wrong. They're not happy. And then I just want to show you how do you do the apple seeds? Well, I watched David Good on the YouTubes. He's a real good guy and everything he tells me to try, it works. So in my door here, if the door would hold still, I've got some peaches and some cups. They're gonna refrigerate until they do roots. And this is to kind of simulate a winter. And you do the same thing with the apple seeds. I put those in a bag and wet it and put all the apple seeds in the dirt and I just leave it in the fridge for a couple months and sure enough, they sprout. I didn't think it was possible to get uh, trees out of a grocery store apple, but you can do it. And if you grow it, you can graft it and then you can put whatever kind of apple you want on there. You can use the apple that it came with. Um, so I'm gonna try it out, nothing to lose. So over here I have the grosser part of the operation. Some people might not want to see this, so turn your head if you get grossed out, but this is where I have my worm bins and I put all of my kitchen scraps in my worm bins and the worms eat it up and they turn it into worm poop and then I can put that in the garden and it works wonders as fertilizer. I also have my pea bucket. Yep, I said pea bucket. I pee in a bucket and I will take that pea out there. I will dilute it with water and it does wonders for the soil. I'm not really sure why people are so scared of pea because they'll put cow poop in their yard, they'll bury an animal in their yard, they'll put chicken poop in their yard, but human pee seems to gross them out. I have no idea why that is. It's perfectly sterile and it is great fertilizer. So yeah, that's it. That's my uh, mid-September garden tour and uh, hopefully things turn out just as good for the fall. I am looking for another property. This tenth of an acre is filled up as you could see. I just don't have enough room to try the things that I want to try. So I'm out there looking for five acres uh, here and there. Uh, still in Texas. I was thinking about going to North Carolina, but I kind of want to stay close to my family if I can. So we'll see what happens. Maybe next time you see me, I will be on five acres and starting this all over again. This, what we see here, it only took me a year. I started this last August. This was all mostly grass. I had a couple container uh, beds. I had a couple raised beds, a couple containers on the uh, horses, but that's really about it. And I had some flowers out front, but this was mostly grass last year and I got serious about August. So it's been about a year in a month. And if I can do it in one place, I can do it in another. This was kind of a trial. So we'll see how it goes.